web UI community meeting in this year. So I want to wish you happy new year and Merry Christmas. Uh, and uh, today, uh, as you can see, our we seem will be micro front ends. Uh, from my side, I want to say that uh, we working with micro front ends a little bit more than uh, three years. Uh, today, uh, as you already know, uh, as you already see, uh, again, we will talk about it. Uh, my think almost of you already know, uh, already uh, know and or heard uh, something about it, uh, or even worked with it, uh, or even working with it for now. From my side, I want to say uh, that micro front end is, if not as a present, uh, then certainly as a future of the most uh, large projects or even mm, not very large. Uh, that is why this topic is uh, uh, very actual and uh, remain relevant. So I propose to start and switch to another one slide. Uh, okay, uh, now we see uh, agenda for this uh, meeting for today. Uh, first of all, uh, we will talk about uh, what is microphone trend in essence. Uh, then we will discuss uh, we will discuss very important questions that uh, every developer should know as the answer to before working with uh, a microphone trend. Uh, then we will get acquainted, uh, perhaps not with all, but with many options for implementing microphone trend uh, architecture. Uh, it's worth understanding that uh, uh, there are a lot uh, of different custom options and approach. Uh, so uh, we will not have a time to uh, review all of them, but we will review, uh, as I said, uh, the most actual and uh, popular. Uh, and of course, uh, then we will <clears throat> have small time to uh, live coding, uh, it will be like review of uh, um, real code. And uh, after that, uh, you could ask uh, your questions and I will try to answer it. Uh, okay, uh, we can move on and switch to another slide. Uh, here we can see just, uh, just an image. Uh, so I propose to start with uh, some theory about micro front end. Uh, what is micro front end? It's an uh, architectural approach in which uh, independent applications are combined into one large application. Uh, it makes it possible to combine uh, different uh, widgets or pages or part of pages uh, written by different teams using different frameworks in one application. Uh, as you can see on picture, uh, we uh, could see, uh, for example, any website, and here we got uh, three different parts. Uh, we could get uh, a huge amount of different parts uh, using different uh, frameworks or libraries, and it will be uh, it will combine in one uh, whole uh, application or one page. As you can see, we could uh, combine. Angular framework, React, uh, view uh, in one page uh, without any problems. Uh, who is not familiar with um, micro front end architecture uh, is uh, definitely familiar with uh, microservice uh, architecture uh, on the backend side. Uh, by and, and large, uh, these architectures have uh, a lot uh, in common. I think. Uh, architects uh, who were inspired uh, by microservice architecture when uh, thinking about micro front end. Uh, so I think we can uh, move on and uh, see uh, some advantages and disadvantages of uh, microservice uh, micro front end architecture. Uh, in order to understand uh, why and when we need to uh, use it, uh, we must uh, consider uh, all the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, sorry, not all, but uh, almost of them. Uh, why not all? Because uh, uh, depending on uh, project, 
uh, on different use cases, uh, you will get uh, different advantages or disadvantages. But of course, in every approach, we got uh, common advantages and disadvantages. Uh, as you can see, we got uh, three advantages. Uh, first of all, uh, a smaller, more maintainable code base. Uh, it means that uh, all our uh, micro frontends will be separated between repositories. Uh, for example, we uh, got one page, uh, we got one micro frontend uh, for one page, uh, and it will be uh, one repo. Uh, for another page, we will create uh, another uh, micro frontend and another repo. Uh, of course, we could get, uh, as I uh, previously said, a uh, few repos, a uh, few micro contents for one page. Uh, and uh, uh, as a result, we will get uh, smaller and maintainable code base because uh, our parts uh, will be separated uh, as a small uh, code base parts. Uh, okay, uh, next uh, advantage, uh, a separate micro frontend can be written with a choice of, sorry, uh, a choice of technologies to suit every taste, which also allows you to remove unnecessary dependencies. Uh, it means that, uh, as I said in previous uh, slide, uh, that we could uh, use uh, different frameworks on uh, one page on in one widget, uh, and uh, uh, all these uh, parts could be uh, developed by different teams. Uh, without any dependencies. Uh, okay, let's move on and uh, think about a short advantage. A separate team can be responsible for the micro front end. This eliminates interaction between teams, which leads uh, to faster development. Uh, we already said about it. Uh, we got uh, for one page uh, different widgets, different uh, components, uh, parts, uh, and uh, it could be uh, separated uh, to different micro front ends. Uh, and uh, it's very uh, big advantage uh, because uh, different team uh, could work uh, with these parts independently. For example, uh, especially uh, this short advantage is very familiar for uh, my current project, where we got a uh, very big amount of uh, front-end repositories and a big amount of teams. Mm -hmm. So uh, teams have repositories for which they are responsible. They are responsible for uh, code base and releases. It means that uh, if uh, another team want to uh, write feature or uh, implement something in uh, as a repo, they need to wait uh, review from responsible team. Uh, and uh, also uh, it means that uh, our micro front end are released almost independently uh, because uh, every team responsible for their micro front end and uh, working independently. Of course, we could get uh, dependencies between uh, micro front ends, uh, but uh, I think it's like edge case. Okay, uh, let's move on uh, to disadvantages. Yes, always and everywhere there are also disadvantages uh, and uh, you should know about it. Uh, first of all, it's increasing the overall complexity of the application. Uh, I think it's uh, clear for you because uh, we need to create different repos. We need to set up it. Uh, we need also set up, maybe not we, but uh, DevOps. I need to set up CI/CD process and other. Uh, then <clears throat> uh, from disadvantages, we could talk about code duplication. Uh, each application is developed by a separate team. Um, maybe not each, but uh, some. Um, uh, sometimes it uh, happened and uh, it uh, could take uh, own decision from technical decision from uh, these teams. For example, 
from my project. Uh, some uh, one team decided to uh, develop uh, their service micro micro front end service uh, using TypeScript. Uh, our team decided to use uh, JavaScript, uh, and uh, it. Uh, uh, and because of uh, that, we got uh, some code duplication. Uh, this leads to uh, repeated loading of the same frameworks, libraries, and general duplicate of code that would uh, have been reused. Uh, okay, let's move on with the short uh, disadvantage. Uh, the GS bundle of uh, monolith application will always uh, will always be smaller than the collection of bundles in a micro front end architecture. Um, I think it's also clear for you uh, because uh, uh, in if we got monolith uh, architecture, we got only one, uh, for example, config, uh, one uh, folder for components. Uh, if we uh, working with micro front end, we will get uh, much more code uh, in general, in uh, general, for all repos together, uh, we also got some. Um, not we. Uh, this architecture got some uh, problems, but uh, also there are a lot of decisions, uh, ready decisions. <clears throat> for example, uh, to not reuse, uh, to not uh, uh, copy the code, we could. Uh, create a separate library for the components and uh, reuse it uh, in our micro content services uh, as we are doing on our current project. Uh, it's very helpful for uh, avoid code duplication and uh, got a smaller bundle as a result. Uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, then uh, we should talk about uh, possible problems with caching and versioning of applications. I think we will uh, talk about it also in uh, uh, next slides. So uh, let's move on and uh, also see the uh, one more disadvantage, the global variable. So CSS style says things uh, to forget about uh, in a micro front end architecture unless applications are completely sandboxed. Uh, I think it's also should be clear because, uh, uh, as usual, micro front ends uh, separated uh, in different repositories, and you don't know uh, which uh, variable or which global style they are using uh, in your service. Uh, if you use global style, uh, everything will be good, but when you uh, deploy and release, uh, something will be. Uh, broken because you revolve global style. So because of that, uh, you should uh, forget about it in micro front end architecture. And uh, uh, I think we uh, talked about all uh, points and could uh, move on. Uh, that is, in general, using uh, this architectural approach, uh, on small uh, project and small teams uh, brings more problems uh, and additional development complexities and benefits. Uh, but uh, large project, uh, as you understood, uh, with the distributed teams, uh, on contrary, uh, benefit more from uh, creating uh, micro front end applications. Uh, here we got uh, perhaps most. Uh, accessible and the uh, simplest uh, methods and techniques to build uh, to build micro front end. Uh, here we got uh, build using iframes, uh, using a framework uh, single SPA, and of course, uh, web pack five uh, model federation. Uh, if we get ahead, uh, as I already said, uh, single SPA uh, is a framework. Uh, and uh, uh, about the pack and iframes, I think you already uh, hear it and knows what is it. Uh, you should understand that uh, there are not all technologies uh, or ways how we can <coughs> implement 
microphone tent. For example, uh, maybe someone know that we could use also, for example, Taylor.js library uh, or any uh, other custom approach. Uh, don't forget that we can, uh, can also just uh, place different repositories and different URLs uh, without any libraries and technologies. Uh, but uh, yeah, we will uh, look only uh, the most popular. Uh, and also, uh, from my side, it's very uh, interesting to see the Webpack 5 model federation uh, as uh, like official uh, way how we can implement micro front end. Uh, and also, uh, if we talk about my uh, Webpack 5 model federation, we will also uh, see uh, how it works in practice. Okay, let's uh, move on uh, with uh, iframe. Uh, we will start with the uh, uh, oldest technology. Uh, here we don't need any libraries uh, or frameworks, uh, only uh, JavaScript built-in uh, functionality using an iframe, each individual widget can be placed into an iframe uh, that uh, loads uh, the desired application. Today, uh, it is uh, not recommended to use this approach because it has a number of problems. Uh, the most um, common of them is uh, incorrect division <coughs> into micro front ends. Uh, if we start diving the page into small parts, then the problem may arise that uh, these parts uh, are very related to each other. Uh, as a result, saving time by reusing application failed. Uh, duplication and functionality also remain remains at a high level. Uh, and uh, next problem uh, you can find in iframe uh, approach. Uh, is a lack of uh, process uh, orchestration. Uh, we will talk uh, more about it in uh, Webpack uh, 5 model federation. Uh, I mean about uh, process orchestration. You will understand what is it. Uh, since all your micro front end are completely separate part uh, of the application, they will uh, have different uh, URLs. And because of that, you could get a problem with uh, cross-origin resource sharing. Uh, but today there are a lot of techniques and uh, libraries uh, which will help you. For example, you can use uh, Nginx uh, for set up it and avoid this problem. You may also have uh, to use uh, other technologies uh, to make uh, friends with iframe in one application. Uh, one more disadvantage for uh, this approach is uh, that authorization, authorization will have to be done in each iframe separately. Uh, and if uh, another is built into one, uh, then there are two. Uh, as you understand, it's also for duplication and uh, uh, some bad, bad practice. Uh, on next slide, we can see uh, how uh, you could use uh, iframe, I mean, for uh, set up micro, uh, micro front end. You just creating different uh, micro front end services and uh, uh, using uh, iframe tag, uh, importing it in uh, our uh, main, or main uh, repo or main page. Uh, there, are, uh, there is example uh, on React, I think, uh, who working with Vue or Angular uh, also uh, understand, uh, understood how it should work, uh, how it should uh, implement. Uh, because this uh, example is very simple, we just need to uh, use this tag iframe and uh, in SRC use uh, uh, URL for our uh, micro front end. Uh, here we could uh, connect uh, different uh, micro front ends. Uh, let's move on. Uh, and here we will see uh, example how we could speak between 
micro front ends use an iframe because it's a uh, uh, next problem uh, in uh, micro front end using iframe uh, named as lack of internal uh, API uh, and as a result communication between micro front ends uh, is uh, complicated. Uh, most often it is solved uh, by uh, using the post message API, as you can see on the screen. Uh, you uh, should, uh, using this uh, post message, uh, send uh, any props of what you want. And uh, in child component, you should uh, add event listener and uh, then you could uh, take these uh, props. Uh, as you understood that uh, we could uh, post message not only from parent application, we could from another child application, uh, but it, uh, from my side, it looks uh, not very good. Uh, and also we using, uh, I mean, uh, if you, talk about disadvantages of uh, iframe in micro front end. We should also uh, talk about uh, reusing app uh, because uh, reusing app is difficult and uh, every new iframe is a new React application. And uh, uh, as you understand, this can consume uh, large resources and it can take a lot of uh, time to load uh, everything, to load page, uh, widgets. Uh, and uh, there are not all problems, but uh, it's a common problems for the iframe, uh, for using a frame in microphone band. Uh, so I think we could move on and uh, uh, see another one approach uh, with a single SPA. Uh, single SPA is a framework that makes uh, it possible to combine a uh, different application, regardless of uh, the library or framework used into it. Uh, just want to notice that it's uh, uh, another one uh, technology to implement micro front end. Uh, and uh, from my side, more preferable. Uh, under the hood, uh, single SPA is a set of uh, existing tools along with uh, its own solutions, uh, like system.js, different wrappers, uh, or also single SPA got <clears throat> own, uh, provides uh, own API for uh, setup. Mm, micro front end also got own API to send props. Uh, and as you already uh, could understand that single SPA uh, is a framework uh, which uh, got a lot of uh, useful tools for building our uh, micro front end uh, application. Uh, if we will look into architecture on slide, root application uh, is uh, where single SPA is connected as the main framework, as well as uh, system.js configuration for the correct loading of external application. We will also see how it looks like uh, in code in the next slides. Uh, for correct integration, each child application must provide uh, public methods, uh, bootstrap, mount, unmount, which are used by single SPA uh, framework for manual strapping of application. Uh, it means that uh, Again, single SPA got uh, provide us uh, a lot of different uh, methods and uh, API, uh, which will help us to build micro front end application. Uh, almost uh, every modern framework uh, has a ready made wrapper that simplifies these tasks and optimize some parts of the process. It means that if we uh, build in uh, for example, React micro front end uh, application, we should not, we should use uh, not a single SPA framework. Uh, we should use a single SPA React framework. It's a wrapper, as I said. And uh, for example, for Angular, we will get single SPA Angular and other. Uh, it's also very good to um, more flexible, uh, more flexible 
build. Uh, okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, just to want to notice that uh, Bootstrap is not related to uh, style library, it's a lifecycle function. Uh, will be called once right before the registered application is mounted for the first time. Okay, uh, in the next slide, we can see configuration for the parent app, which will include our micro front ends, uh, but we still have the micro front ends themselves and they, are, uh, they also need to prepare it somehow. Uh, the single SPA uh, ecosystem allows us to do this too. Uh, it has libraries for creating micro fans for different uh, frameworks, as I already said. Uh, for example, uh, as you can see in parent application, we just need to, um, to use a register application function uh, where we should uh, provide name, we should uh, provide uh, a dynamic import uh, on our uh, micro front end, and then uh, we should provide the path where we should uh, load our uh, micro front end service. In the child application, we just need to uh, use uh, uh, framework, as I said, related to the framework uh, or library which we used to uh, our widget or page. I mean, if we use uh, React, we will create. We should use a single SP uh, React framework. Uh, everything you could read in documentation to understand what you need to uh, use, for example, for Angular or Vue. And as you can see here, we just need to uh, again uh, call a function and uh, provide some details. Sorry. Uh, if we talk about uh, params, uh, React, React DOM, root component, uh, it also required uh, in single SPA. We, we uh, uh, single SPA required to uh, pass React, uh, pass React DOM, root component, uh, and error boundary. So uh, it's like um, requir required fields, and you always will provide it. Uh, and uh, that's it for this slide, I think. We can uh, see another. Uh, and now uh, we can see the uh, part uh, where we uh, will set up uh, the, um, our parent uh, application. Uh, you, por you probably uh, will get a question why we need to use uh, System GS import map. Uh, yeah, here we got it. Uh, our micro front ends are deployed and retrieved from uh, below uh, storage. Accordingly, <clears throat> it will not be possible to import them through relative paths from the current host. You need to request uh, dynamically and lazily. We don't know in advance uh, where the bundles will be stored, but we want to import them. Uh, and uh, if you want to hmm. read additional uh, information about in system.js import map or how we should uh, Import it uh, in single SPA. You could read uh, in documentation. Uh, there are uh, very big amount of different examples uh, using different uh, frameworks. Uh, so they got uh, very good documentation. And uh, if we uh, come to the next slide, uh, we will see uh, how it uh, looks uh, uh, in the uh, body uh, tag in our parent application. So uh, you just need to understand that it's, uh, it's uh, one file. And uh, here we got connection of our uh, two uh, micro front end application. Uh, Angular, for example, yeah, and uh, React. Uh, as we uh, saw uh, two sl uh, one slide before or two, uh, we got register application, we got name, uh, here we got uh, lazy import uh, and uh, page where we should uh, use this uh, micro front end. And here we got navigation. So you understand you know, if you click 
for example, on navigation uh, Angular app, we will come to uh, this micro frontend. If we click on React app, uh, we will come to this micro frontend. Uh, okay, let's move on and uh, see uh, one of the most interesting technology for today uh, from my side uh, for implementing micro frontends. Uh, you can see uh, name on the on slide here it's the pack 5 model federation uh, and uh, as you understand there is no uh, there is not a separate library or framework uh, it's just a plugin for a well-known bundler webpack uh, this plugin is required you should understand that this plugin is required uh, on both uh, parent and child application side and it's very important uh, the model federation plugin allows uh, an application to export one uh, or more modules uh, into a separate JS file. Uh, a great way to build a micro frontend application. A uh, short party application can uh, import ready made modules uh, for themselves. Uh, this could be, for example, React components. Uh, moreover, the pack takes care of. Uh, importing dependencies. We will also see it in the next slides. Uh, and uh, the difference from NPM uh, is that uh, import in runtime. Okay, uh, let's move on uh, and see uh, how we should uh, configure and use model federation plugin. <clears throat> we also will uh, have some time and use this approach on practice, as I said. But first of all, we need to understand the uh, params uh, we are using. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, just a simple uh, configuration for the pack. Uh, and what uh, interesting here is uh, plugin, uh, model federation plugin. Uh, here we got a uh, name. It's a name of micro frontend service. Name can be uh, any what you want. Uh, also, we got uh, field remotes. Uh, remotes uh, it's is option is used to consume the models from other application. This tells the pack which uh, tells it the pack which model should be loaded remotely from other application when they are needed. Uh, we will also uh, see uh, it in practice and uh, share it. Uh, option in share it, we can specify dependencies that do not need to be loaded. Uh, for example, if uh, the parent application loads React, then child uh, does not need to upload it again. Uh, and uh, it's very useful. Okay, let's move on and see how uh, should be configured a child application. Uh, we just uh, see here uh, new field exposes. Uh, in exposes, uh, the case uh, are our future imports and the values are physical location of the files. Uh, also important thing that, uh, as I said, uh, that root uh, the root of our application must be connected dynamically. Uh, otherwise, the application will try to load first and then libraries uh, that uh, we specified and share it above uh, in which case uh, the assembly will fail. Okay, uh, now we could move on to uh, our uh, code review part uh, and uh, see how uh, the Pack Model 5 Federation uh, work on practice. Here we got uh, three micro front end services uh, for uh, just for comfortable uh, review i put it in one uh, folder uh, of course you could create uh, different uh, repositories for this micro front ends and as usual it will be different repos uh, different uh, urls uh, but now uh, i put it in one folder uh, and also for run it together, I use an uh, WS run and um, concurrently. Uh, just for our comfortable review. And now 
let uh, see how it look like. Uh, nothing uh, special, uh, but uh, let's see uh, the code base. Uh, I propose to see uh, first home because uh, we can check the pack uh, config and see that uh, we loaded uh, our home uh, microphone 10 service. As you can see, yeah, this port, uh, check URL, yeah. Uh, we uh, loaded the home uh, microphone tent, uh, service. Uh, I will not stop uh, on other options. Uh, we are interested only in model federation uh, because uh, this plugin uh, says that we are using microphone tent. Uh, and uh, as we saw in the slides, uh, we got name uh, option, uh, we named it home. We got file name, uh, file name. Uh, we did not talk about file name, but uh, file name you could also name as you want. Uh, it's name of file in which uh, it is collected. Uh, then we got remotes. It means that mm. uh, we connected uh, in this, uh, Microfront service, we connected uh, another one uh, with name nav. Uh, and exposes. Uh, as you remember, exposes means that we want to something export in another uh, in another microfront service. We will also see where uh, we uh, export in it. Uh, but for now, we just uh, see that we are using uh, nav in uh, this home. And uh, just open app. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, let's start with uh, maybe index.js. As I said previously, we need to use import, uh, lazy import. Um, also, uh, according to documentation, we are required uh, to name uh, our base file as a bootstrap.js. Uh, and uh, in Bootstrap.js, we just got configuration like we got in uh, index.js and simple React application. Uh, and then in uh, Bootstrap.js, we are uh, rendering app.js. Uh, in app.js, uh, we are just interested in that uh, we are using uh, header uh, and importing from uh, nav header and using it like a simple component. Uh, and as you understand here, we got uh, two microservices. Uh, for example, this uh, head, uh, this part uh, is one microservice, uh, micro front end. Uh, and below, we got uh, another part which uh, implemented here. Uh, so, uh, our uh, for now, our parent application is uh, whole and home uh, got inside it uh, header, uh, another micro uh, And uh, let's move on uh, to the search. Uh, it's more interesting uh, micro oh, Just uh, let's uh, overview the webpack config in nav because <clears throat> uh, we should understand how uh, we need to uh, configure a child application. Uh, and here we... Uh, as you see, we does not got uh, a lot. Uh, we just got name. Again, we got file name, remote entry JS. It's not important to got different names. Uh, we can name it remote entry in each micro front end uh, service. Uh, exposes, uh, it's very important. We are exposing uh, SRC header. Here we could see header. And as you can see, we got the same structure in home. Uh, and uh, we will get the same structure in every uh, micro front end application using Webpack model federation. Um, and just uh, return to AppGS, and uh, you can see that uh, we are importing uh, header from uh, nav header. And uh, uh, since for this uh, option, we got this opportunity. Okay, uh, let's 
<coughs> move on. Uh, in header, we does not got a lot, just header. Uh, let's move on to the search because uh, search uh, already got uh, two micro front end services in it. As you can see, we got again name, file name, and here we are connecting to uh, micro front end services, home, and nav. Uh, let's open uh, URL for the search page. As you can see, public pass uh, we got here. Uh, and open uh, again, we can see that uh, structure mainly the same. And uh, here we got already imported um, our micro front end uh, services uh, header as we did in. Uh, uh, in home, uh, then we imported clients uh, from home, uh, logo card from home, and also we got uh, lazy import for uh, logo carousel. But why we uh, did it? We could uh, import without uh, lazy importing. Uh, it's because we uh, showing logo carousel uh, without. Uh, mm, depending on a uh, parameter. Uh, and by default, this parameter is false. So we uh, don't need to import it immediately, but it's not about Webpack model federation. And as a result, if we click on show carousel, we will see that uh, here we got uh, one micro front end application. Uh, then we got uh, search page. It's uh, our parent code code in our parent application and uh, below we got uh, another micro front end application from uh, our uh, home uh, folder it's the same uh, okay i think we uh, put finished uh, and uh, pro proceed with uh, your questions ah sorry forget to uh, notice that we now have a, a full-fledged uh, official approach to the development of uh, micro front ends, which is uh, supported in all modern browsers uh, with the minimum boilerplate for their organization. Uh, anyone can be writing and react, view or anything else, uh, but you should understand that in every application, parent application in every child application you should use uh, only webpack if you want to use a webpack model federation uh, each of uh, micro front ends is minimally uh, tied to the environment uh, in which it will be located and maximally tied to itself uh, here we got uh, what we want uh, low cobbling and high comprehension uh, <clears throat> updates and delivery of interface to production takes no more than uh, 10 minutes of course if you will not get unit test uh, the entire cd occurs automatically with a couple of parameters specified uh, plus you can always see what who and when uh, deployed via commits to the repository with uh, import map which is very uh, convenient uh, but we also got pros uh, there are uh, oh, some cons, uh, and it should be uh, talked since uh, uh, the micro front end must be a full fledged application. We uh, do not code split them. Accordingly, the bundle sometimes turn out to be not smallest, uh, which is worth considering for certain business segments. And uh, well, uh, despite the convenient CD, there is still problems with monitoring micro front ends. Uh, catching errors, uh, dependency also appear between repositories. If you got different incompatible versions of package, uh, like uh, we got in one micro front end, we got uh, React version uh, 18. Uh, and if we want to uh, another micro front end uh, service used another version React, which is incompatible with uh, 18, then we need to update or decrease uh, other versions. Uh, that's it from 
my side. Maybe you got a question you can ask here now. Thank you, uh, Alexei. Yeah, guys, if uh, someone has any questions, please unmute and ask or raise your hand or use our chat in Zoom.